Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about the basics of graphing and writing hyperbola. So, part one, we're just going to talk about what a uh, hyperbola looks like, and then uh, part two will be more specifically how to write and graph hyperbolas. Okay, so just some hyperbola basics. Definition of a hyperbola is a set of all points such that the difference of the distances between all points and the foci uh, on the parabola is going to be constant, which means that if I take uh, D1, so D1, let's call this focus 1, and then this would be focus 2. So if I take the difference between D1 and D2, that difference is going to be constant um, as I graph the set of points which are called the hyperbola. Now I can also draw uh, another set of lines to the other branch of a hyperbola and we call each of these uh, hyperbola uh, segments branches. So if I draw another value here, uh, another length here, and I call this D2, and then I draw a length here, and let's just make this in blue just so that we can color code it a little bit better and I call this D1, then the difference between D2 and D1, again, will be constant. So it would be the absolute value of the difference between the two is going to be constant. That's going to be the definition of a hyperbola. Okay, so let's just recall a circle is going to be the set of all points that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. A parabola, the definition of a parabola is a set of all points uh, that are equidistant from a point called the focus and a line called the directrix. And then an ellipse is going to be the set of all points such that the sum of the distances from the two foci, the sum now, um, are going to be constant. And the hyperbola, it's the difference between uh, the distances between the two foci that's going to be constant. All right. So just remember the hyperbola and ellipses are similar in that they both have two foci and the ellipse, the definition is the sum of the two foci uh, determine the set of uh, the points and then in the hyperbola it's the difference uh, the distances from the two foci that determine the two points. All right, so let's talk about some of the characteristics of the hyperbola. We have a transverse axis and the transverse axis in this case is going to bisect um, or join the vertices of the hyperbola. Uh, it's also going to uh, be a symmetrical line which cuts the branches of the hyperbola in half. So we have a transverse axis and then we have two vertices. The two vertices are the tips of the branches of the hyperbola. Uh, and again the branch, I have a branch here on the left and a branch here on the right. And then my A value is going to be similar to uh, the ellipse. The A value is going to be the distance from the center to the vertices. Now the dif difference between a hyperbola and ellipse is that the hyperbola does not have a co-vertex. All right, so the uh, vertices, as I mentioned, are the tips of each of the branches of the parabola. The vertices are going to be A units from the center, so I mark off here as a center. The center in this case, at least for now, is going to be the intersection of the X and Y axis. Uh, again, I marked off the center here, and the, I have the distance from the two foci. So the center of the hyperbola is the midpoint between the vertices uh, and the foci along the transverse axis. So if you recall, we uh, defined the midpoint formula when we started talking about ellipses, and you'll need to use that again uh, in figuring out equations for hyperbolas. Uh, and then the foci of the hyperbola lie inside of the branches, just like they do for uh, the parabolas and they're going to be C units from the center. So A units from the center gave us the vertices, C units from the center gives us the foci. Uh, so in this case we have again the center at the origin uh, and the uh, value for the foci in this case is going to be negative C0 and C0. But ultimately it's just going to be C units along the transverse axis um, into both of the branches of the hyperbola. All right, so now in determining the C value, um, ultimately you're going to be given an equation for hyperbola, and you can figure out what the C value is by using the equation C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now recall from our discussion about uh, ellipses 
that you were able to find out what the c value uh, is for ellipses because c squared was equal to a squared minus b squared. In a hyperbola, c squared now is equal to a squared plus b squared. So part of the confusion uh, with my students lies in determining uh, which particular equation to use to find the focus. Uh, in this case, with the way that I, I recall it is uh, just by remembering that when I have an equation for an ellipse, I'm adding two terms together. And you'll see in just a second when I am uh, creating an equation for a hyperbola, I'm subtracting two terms from each other. So I use the opposite sign to determine the C value for an ellipse and the opposite sign uh, uh, for the A squared plus B segment to determine the formula for C for a hyperbola. All right, so let's talk about uh, what uh, a hyperbola equation looks like and how we form a hyperbola. The other two, uh, another characteristics of a hyperbola that we want to be aware of, not only are the branches, but also the asymptotes. And recall, an asymptote is that line which uh, the graph gets closer and closer to, but never touches. So an asymptote in this case is, our, is really our uh, framework for the branch, because it shows us where the branches of the hyperbola go to, but never touch. So I've drawn my asymptotes in red. I have two asymptotes, and again, those asymptotes are those uh, points which the, uh, or the lines which the hyperbola, the branches of the hyperbola get close to, but never quite touch. Okay, and this is just reiterating what I had said before. And so sometimes um, it helps to draw the asymptotes when you're graphing. And the way that you do that is to form diagonals based on the intersection um, through the center of the hyperbola. And those uh, diagonals have a slope which include both the A and B value depending on the location of the transverse axis. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail when we talk more specifically about writing equations and graphing hyperbolas. But let's just say for now that you're able to figure out based on uh, remember, we had the c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared formula. You're able to use the a and b values to find the slope of the asymptotes uh, once you have the equation for the hyperbola set up. All right, so just in summary, we have asymptotes, uh, the center, uh, the vertices, the transverse axis, and the foci, uh, and the branches of the uh, hyperbola. So again, the asymptotes, center, vertices, transverse axis, and fo foci all defining what the branch of a hyperbola looks like. So now let's talk real, br real briefly about equations for hyperbolas. And we'll come back to this when we uh, do more specific graphing and writing equations. So I have uh, two ways that I can orient the transverse axis. One is in which the horizontal uh, or the transverse axis is horizontal. And my equation for formula for the hyperbola in that case is x minus h squared uh, over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared, where the center of the hyperbola is located at hk. So let's just recall that the only difference now between the hyperbola and the ellipse is this sign, right? In this case, the sign is going to be negative hyperbola. Um, so I'm subtracting the y squared term from the x squared term. Everything else remains the same. The center, in terms of the center, uh, the center is also at hk. A values and the b values uh, are still part of the uh, definition of how to graph a hyperbola and also a definition of how to graph an ellipse. So everything in terms of the format of the uh, formula remains the same for hyperbola, except that we change the sign from an ellipse to make it a negative sign. So in this case here, I have a horizontal transverse axis for a hyperbola. And then I can also have a vertical transverse axis for a hyperbola, where the transverse axis runs symmetrically through the branches. In this case, the branches open up or down. My hk value still remains the center. Uh, but in this case, the y squared value uh, is, representing, is represented by the a squared denominator, and the x squared value is represented by the b squared value. Now, dissimilar to the ellipse, the a squared value does not have to be uh, larger than the b squared value. So the a squared value can be less than the b squared value, 
doesn't necessarily have to be greater than the b squared value. So just be careful when you're uh, defining uh, the terms or the positions of the terms in the equation. What you're looking for in this case is which term is negative and which term is positive, and then you're going to orient the terms accordingly. In the ellipse, you were looking for the denominator that had the largest value, uh, and you were orienting that term accordingly. All right, so once again, I have a horizontal transverse axis where the branches of the hyperbola open right or left, and then I have uh, an equation for a vertical transverse axis where the branches of the hyperbola open up or down. All right, so again, defining A, I have a horizontal transverse axis. Now here's my A squared value. So now we're taking a look more specifically at the formula. My A value in this case is going to be the distance from the center to the vertices. All right, so I move, once I find the center from the HK values, I can determine what the A value is and then move uh, towards or uh, into or close to the uh, branches, actually on the branches, as I move A units from the center to the tips of the branches, which we call the vertices. So, uh, so again, A is just that distance from the center to the vertices. And then A is also the, the denominator associated with the positive term. So in this case, my positive term is x minus h squared. Uh, A squared goes underneath that positive term. B squared value will go underneath or as a denominator for the negative value. All right, C is going to be the distance from the center in both directions along the foci, uh, I'm sorry, along the transverse axis uh, to the foci. So I find out what my center is, uh, it's HK, and then I move along the transverse axis into the parabolas, uh, C units, and I can derive what the C value is, again, from the uh, equation C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Uh, next and finally, my B values. My B values are going to be that distance from the center uh, that are not along the transverse axis, uh, but along another axis that runs perpendicular to the transverse axis and uh, that also intersects the transverse axis at the center. And I'm going to move a B units up to find this point and this point. I don't really have a term for the point other than the B value is going to help us to define the slope of the asymptotes, and I'm going to show you how that works in just a second. So the B value doesn't really give us a defined point in terms of the characteristic of the branch of a hyperbola, but it will help us to define the, uh, the asymptotes for the hyperbola. All right, so in this case, uh, when I have a transverse axis, I can figure out what the asymptotes are uh, by creating an equation y is equal to plus or minus b over a. And uh, that equation through the center, uh, in this case which is the origin, gives us the slope of the line. So really what we want to find is the slope. And the slope of the line is uh, plus or minus b over a. Now I can create that equation by identifying the center and using that as a point and then using your point slope formula with the slope uh, plus or minus b over a and the point that you're given as the center. And we'll talk more specifically about that when we uh, go through writing and graphing equations in the next section of hyperbolas. But for now, where we have a center at the origin, the equation becomes y is equal to plus or minus b over a. But plus or minus b over a just re represents the slopes of the two asymptotes. So again, here b is the distance, the vertical distance uh, up and A is the horizontal distance here between the uh, center of the uh, hyperbola and this point here, which uh, the asymptote goes through. So the asymptote goes through both the center, in this case, and also this point that's identified. That's A units horizontally and B units vertically in both directions. All right, so moving on. When I have a uh, horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, when I have a vertical transverse axis, now the equation for the asymptote becomes plus or minus a over b. So the a distance still is that distance from the center to the vertex. The b value gives me that distance um, that helps me define the asymptote. But now I'm defining that slope as a over b, 
instead of B over A in this case. So the slope for the uh, horizontal transverse axis, B over A, plus or minus B over A. The slope for the uh, vertical transverse axis for the asymptote is going to be plus or minus A over B. Right, so for both of them, you're gonna have to be able to find, find the equation for the asymptote because again, the asymptote gives you that framework by which to structure the branches of the hyperbola. Okay, so just as a quick review, we're gonna talk about hyperbola basics again. Um, the definition of a hyperbola is a set of all points such that the difference of the distances between the uh, points and the foci is constant. So D2 minus D1 or D1 minus two, D2 will give us a constant value and that defines the branches of the hyperbola. Um, I have a transverse axis I have an A value or a distance between the center and the vertices. I have two foci. I have two branches and also the asymptotes that we discussed earlier. Now, in this case, I have uh, two different orientations for the transverse axis. I can have a transverse axis that is horizontal. In this case, the uh, X squared value is associated with a positive value. A squared is always associated with a positive value and the y squared value is associated with a negative uh, term. And then I have the center of the hyperbola, which is always going to be h and k. I can also have a transverse axis that is vertical. Again, the a squared value goes with the positive term, the y squared value. b squared goes with the negative term, the x squared uh, value. And you can see the transverse axis splits or bisects the branches of the parabola into two symmetrical halves. I can create my uh, slope or my asymptotes by looking at the different equations for the hyperbola and the uh, transverse axis. In the case where I have a vertical transverse axis, the slope is going to be uh, plus or minus a over b. And I can find out the equation for the line, which we will do again in a separate section by identifying the center as the point and then using the slope that's identified here. And I can also find out the slope for a hyperbola with a horizontal transverse axis. That's going to be plus or minus now B over A. All right, that's it for hyperbolas and the basics of hyperbolas and not math. Come and join us for graphing and writing equations for hyperbolas in the next edition.